So, this is my lift. The cable broke. It's a 7,000 pound lift. This one is kind of a cheaper version. Um, let's see here. So model FP8KDS. So that might be 8,000 actually. Yeah, 8,000. So if you had a 7,000, this would be a 7. Um, made in China, so it's it's a cheaper version of a more expensive lift, if that makes sense. This thing um, only costs me, I think, about 14, 1500 bucks. And we'll go through some of the differences between more expensive lifts that I've found and this one. But they're all pretty much made the same. I mean, they got the same idea, the same components. Uh, you know, the same, same or similar pulleys, uh, that type of thing. But uh, our primary concern right now is to replace this cable. So we'll start with that and then um, move forward. So relatively straightforward here, what you want to do is um, jack up the, if it's broken, jack it up and then lock it or put jack stands under it because you want some slack here in these lines. You don't want these to be tight or anything otherwise you won't be able to take this apart. So, uh, broken one went through here. So what we're going to have to do is undo this nut, remove this plate, and then put the new line in right here. The new line is a little different, but the concept the same. It has a little stopper on the end that will prevent it from coming back. So uh, before that, we just need to figure out the routing. So we have to look at that first. We have to take uh, this plate off to access the uh, pulley. And just take note of the other pulleys and all the other ones. They actually go in front. Um, you'd think it would go behind, but it doesn't. So as you can see, there's no room behind. There's another pulley here, and that is what um, the, the line goes. Let me just do it this way. The line's going to go here, and then on the other side of this pulley here, and then it's going to go that way. Okay? And then on the top, we've just got it secured with a couple washers here. big nut to just adjust, fine-tune the length of it. So let me figure out, I'm assuming I'll just hook it up on top and then run the line and then the line through here because it has to wrap around this pulley here and then into the plate. And I'm hoping it's the right length. I guess we'll figure that out as well because I don't know. There's not much documentation on this. Just had to kind of roughly measure the length and hope it's right. So here's an example. <clears throat> this is the locking mechanism. On this unit it actually has a threaded stud that goes into the plate. Do you see the plate down there? On more expensive versions this actually has a welded steel boss that comes out and then attaches to something here. So this one actually bent. I had to bend it back and fix it, but that's just little things like that are the differences between a cheaper lift and more expensive one. Also, so here's our pulley. So this is kind of going to go like this. And that's going to go on the cable. Normally this shaft here 
has a fitting on the end that you can grease. And then the grease pops out kind of in the middle. There's actually a little hole right there. And you can grease the bearing of the pulley. And here you can kind of see what's left of some grease, but there's no way to grease it without taking it apart. I don't know if this thing can be, I don't even know what this is. I don't know if this can be removed or you could put like a grease fitting on there. I'm not sure. I didn't really look into it. I will look into it though, see if that comes out. But for now, I'm just going to grease this manually right in this area. So this pulley is uh, greased again. So make sure all the safety stuff is properly adjusted and installed. There's a lever on the other side that you, you can either lock or unlock, so you can lower the lift down. This is what controls that. So this will drop um, the locking mechanism into the rail. <clears throat> and just so you can see the other side, same thing. It's just like a, a threaded piece that goes into the, the locker. And then up here is just our dust shield and protective cover. And then we've got our, so this thing too, this, this is what I'm talking about, should have like a fitting on it for greasing. But there's just an Allen screw here and that, that removes this outer piece and then you can slide the shaft out. And then inside you've got your pulley, the line in front, and then the pulley where the line goes behind it. I wouldn't recommend greasing these lines necessarily just the uh, actual pulley movement so it looks like it is the right length that's good uh, i've just got this temporarily threaded on top and then it goes down here and i've got it threaded or routed through here loosely kind of around this pulley right there and then you can see where this line comes around and then we just have to remove this plate and then install the line in here. You should um, replace these lines if they start to fray at all. This one was kind of bad before it broke, so that's on me. But you can kind of see this line here, there's like a little piece coming off there, a little piece coming off here, but nothing too crazy yet. Obviously, you want to make sure these are adjusted correctly on top. So, so your each post is essentially raising the same amount so it doesn't get jammed on one of the corners. So I'm going to go ahead and grease uh, the pulley, put that back on, and install it on here, and then loosely get our, our cable. I'll probably put some grease up here, too, on this pulley area. That's just metal on metal right now. And once I'm done that, oops, I will work on this. Uh, I don't think this ram is going to go back into the uh, cylinder. But I do have to take that big nut off to get this plate off to, to get the uh, new cable in there. Because it's got a hole on the bottom for the cable to go in. And then it kind of locks it in there like that. So I'll do that and uh, I'll be back. Yeah, I've removed the nut from the shaft that's going to allow me to move this plate. And everything is nice and loose. That's good. And then we're going to wrap our line around this bottom pulley. And then snake our line through here like that. Put the nut back on, tighten it down. I don't know what the torque rating is supposed to be on this, but at least to uh, hold the plate on. I mean, you may want the plastic lock nut portion to engage, obviously, on the threads. Um, I haven't had any issues with it backing off or anything since I had it, but better be safe than sorry. 
So now we can work on the alignment of this cable around the pulley, install this final pulley, and then we're done. Okay, just a final look here. We've got the pulley, the line in here around this pulley. This is greased up now. And I had to jack this side up a little bit to fit it under the pulley. It's the only way to put the tension and everything. This is in here good. Just have to tighten that nut down. And then we are around the pulley here. So that's all set. And now we just gotta tighten this up to get the proper um, length and tension on it. And then once I do that, I can put this cap back on. Nope, oh, I messed up. Dang it, I knew it. The, uh, the line has to go through the cover first, which is silly on my part. Not a big deal. Just has to have to loosen the top, drop it down, and then put it through the cover. So well, let me do that first. Okay, so I got the line through the bra uh, cover, and we've got this all greased up nice. Uh, so essentially how this works is this goes on top, and it holds kind of the bearing assembly in place, and pops around the other side. And now what's here is this little cover with a hole and there's a corresponding hole on this which I can't move right now so we'll just leave it there uh, so basically this goes on as kind of the the nut that holds everything together there's a little allen plug on the end that will secure this ring to the inner uh, stud or the inner um, whatever you want to call it, pin, inner pin. So we'll tighten this down, like so. And the thing is, if you do buy a cheaper lift like this, a lot of the parts you can replace with the better, higher quality lift parts. So this pin you could probably replace with one with the grease fitting on it. Um, you know, or if there's different parts of this fixture that you don't like, you want better, you can upgrade them. And then this is just a screw, Phillips head screw that secures this cover on the front here. So I'll put that in over here. And we're in business. Okay, so now what I want to do is remove the four jack stands I have in each corner. And then I'm going to tighten this line, the nut on the top, to make sure it has the correct tension. And actually, I could do that first. I just want to make sure that there's not this much slack in it. So I'll tighten it up similar to the other ones. However, since it's on jack stands, the other ones are kind of loose. Um, but... We just, we don't want this much slack, so I'm going to tighten this up a little bit at least, and then go from there. Alright, so now what I want to do, I want to lift this up. To, we'll just pick something, and right now it looks like that right side's a tiny bit higher, but we'll double check everything. So... I'm going to engage this, not here, okay, so now it's disengaged, so you can lower it, and now it should be engaged, let's just see here, so if we lower it down, okay, so we're locked in on one of these settings. And assuming the setting is the same all the way around, we can now check the tension on individual cables. 
Uh, so this one, you can actually touch the post. This one, same thing. This one, same thing. And this one, brand new one. Now look at this one. This one's super tight. So like I was saying, it should probably be a little bit more loose because it's, it's resting on the, the lock. So we're going to loosen this up a little bit. i to do this off camera because I have to hold the bottom with the 17 millimeter and then loosen the top nut here. So I'm going to loosen this so there's just a little bit of slack. Okay, I was partially correct. If anyone knows the actual procedure on how to adjust these, let me know. But I'm going to try starting it with the ground because then I know at least everything is equal minus any floor level issues. Um, but I'm looking for kind of the tension here. So this is the brand new cable and you can squeeze it to the post. It's tent, it's tight, it's got good tension. And then if I go over here, this is, I think, too much. So I need to tighten this side up to at least match the tension of the new cable. And if I look over here, same thing. This is pretty easy to touch the post. So I'm going to tighten this one up, get a little bit more tension on it. And then same here. This one's even, this is much worse. I mean, this one you can pull all the way halfway across the post. But this one we don't have much um, more threads on, so we're kind of limited on this side. So that's what I'm going to try. Um, it went up and came down fine, though, pretty equally as is. So pretty happy with it now. Just a little fine-tuning. And then we're done. So I'm going to tighten up the other three. Um, the thing is, this one is pretty much um, as loose as it can be. The nut is basically on the top of the stud, the threads, and I can't get any more loose. I can get more tight, which I don't want. But So I'm going to tighten the other three and see what happens. Okay, got everything tightened up a bit more. Let's do a test lift here. Make sure everything comes up equally. We're looking pretty good here. Pretty good. Nothing's uh, pulling one side or the other. You don't see any posts like lifting off the ground, and uh, you don't you actually don't have to drill these into the ground and mount them in the cement. Uh, they, it's fine as it is, especially if you want to move it. It comes with the big casters you can put on these hooks, and then essentially you lift it up and put wheels on this thing and roll it around. So. Yeah, you can find one of these for 1500 bucks. That's kind of the, the price point of these, I think, uh, a good one at least. Yeah, we're looking good. Everything's nice and level. We'll take one final look underneath. Once we're all the way up. Then we'll test the, the safety lock. It's never going to be that high, but we'll just take a look here. So, this is good. Let's tension this one. A little bit tighter on the right than this left one, but you should do all your inspections, obviously. Make sure uh, you're uh, being safe. So this ram looks like it just kind of sits in here. I don't know if that's the case with a uh, more expensive one or not, but it's kind of the, the trade-offs between you know, a super expensive one and a little bit cheaper one. So yeah, and then these pulleys too, they're supposed to be grease fittings on the bottom. I don't know. 
I don't know if that is a grease fitting or what that brass thing is. I've never seen a grease fitting like that. So, okay, let's keep looking here. This bar right here under the hose is, is the locking mechanism, so just keep that in mind. Um, here's all our cables. You just want to make sure everything's in the pulleys themselves, which they are. And here's our new cable right there. Everything looks great. This side, that's all good too. Everything's inside the pulleys, which is phenomenal. So yeah, that's it's looking pretty good. So let's activate the, the lock here. You can see this is kind of a little janky, this setup. Just because it's relying on this thin little piece of tube to release the other side. But what's going to happen is when it hits the lock, so when it comes to here, uh, this mechanism is basically going to drop inside of it. So let's watch that work. I'm assuming it's going to work. Yep. So you can see it's kind of falling into it. Sometimes it needs some help a little bit, but that should lock right there. Okay, so all four sides should be inside of here or all the way down and locked which it is oh and by the way this thing is super helpful i think you can buy one of these for three or four hundred bucks this like center lift thing but super handy and actually i i thought i'd regret not getting a two post lift but i actually prefer the four post because you can do everything a two post can plus more um, alignments, anything that has to do with the vehicle weight on the ground. Uh, obviously it is bigger than a two post, but if you have the room, I mean, definitely get at least uh, a two post plus this if you can. Um, but honestly, and then to unlock, you just pull this all the way flush down. Um, I don't know, I just wanted the fact, I wanted the ability to park another vehicle under it. That's kind of why I went with four post. Um, but I found it is a little bit of a pain to do like transmission swaps because you don't have that free space, but you can still jack up the front of the car and do it that way. So it's, it's very doable. But the big thing is, like I said, if for any reason you need the car on its weight as if it were on the ground a four post is the way to go uh, i do alignments on this thing i did subframe work on the white car um, like i welded up the entire rear subframe uh, and i needed to have the ability to to lower the car down and work on it with uh, the weight on it so i've had this thing since about 2015 so we're going on almost 10 years now on all the original parts original cables other than the uh, broken one but the motor's been great hasn't had any issues um, pumping the fluid any night on any leaks so I'm really pretty happy with this unit um, so if you have something like this you can always look up your model number google it online um, but what I found is that if it's a 7,000 or 8,000 or 11,000 it's going to have that number somewhere in the model whether it's the Chinese version a cheaper version or like a Ben pack or a more well-known more expensive version the parts are gonna interchange and cross over no matter what so if you can find the parts diagram for any 7,000 pound four post lift you're likely going to be able to find replacement parts for it so I hope this helped some people out there if you're having a broken lift broken cable whatever or maintenance on it um, the grease, the lubrication, um, you know, that's what I like to do. I just like to help anyone in need. So it took me maybe an hour or two to, to just basically research, find the part, find the cable part number and all that, get it ordered, uh, ordered two days ago and here it is. So thanks for watching. I'll put part numbers and all that in the description below, but until next time.